Today, I'm going to be helping you stay anonymous using Tor, but first, my name is Steve Smith, this is the QA Weekly, and the first thing we're going to do is show you this. This is the Tor browser. You go to torproject.org to get it. It is free. It works on many different operating systems, and once it is installed, I would suggest that you hit pause on this video and just look at it after. The first thing we're going to be doing is explaining this. Don't maximize the screen. The resolution that's available to everybody on their screens can be unique and can identify you. And being anonymous is the entire point of the Tor browser. So the first thing you better do is not change the resolution of that viewing space. Just keep it at this. The second thing is, even though it is based on the Firefox engine, and yes, you can install plugins if you really, 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 really want to, you don't want to. It's got HTTPS everywhere, which is enabled by default. And you also got no script, meaning that because of the way everything works, you will end up on any HTTPS website if it exists, whenever you're actually asking for it. You can make it so that if it doesn't have HTTPS at all, you're not connecting it to it at all. And of course, no script makes it so that advertisements don't load anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. It does kind of break websites, which is why you have the ability to allow specific, and that, not, not in this case, but you go to any other website, it will allow you to temporarily allow it, or you can just enable it for everything. Generally, not a good idea. So obviously, you don't want to install password vaults, you don't want to install ad blocks or anything else, because that would make your browser different. And the idea is to stay anonymous. The other thing is you don't want to use any of your personal information when you're on the Tor network. That would actually identify you and make you no longer anonymous. So logging in, using your personal email addresses or business addresses, even using things like Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, and sharing files is frowned upon when we're trying to stay anonymous. You have to use anonymous services with this thing. So yeah, obviously. The other thing is if you're gonna download a file, generally speaking, if you're gonna open a PDF, you can open it inside of the Tor browser. It's got a PDF viewer that is secure, but if you download a file from here, considering the way that most of these files, I mean, even on the public internet work, they will call to files that are accessible somewhere else meaning that you can be found out and uh, your anonymous veil is now gone and in the garbage. So obviously that makes it so that it kind of defeats the point of being anonymous. And obviously, if you want to change any of the behavior on this browser, like um, going to options and going to privacy and clicking tracking protection in private modes, which is basically do not track, I wouldn't do it. First of all, you're not technically trackable. And the other thing is changing that makes you unique. How do I know? I actually tested it. I do run a fingerprint experiment on my website, which I only use against these kinds of things to test if they actually work. And you can tell the difference between somebody running, do not track, and someone running, just a normal generic install that hasn't changed anything. So obviously you don't want to change anything about it. But here are a few other things that you might like. So if you really have trouble using the Tor browser, let's say you are in China. You can click on this onion icon, go to the Tor network settings, select Tor is censored in my country, and then select a, a built-in bridge, which is four, and you got one that works in China, by the way, or you can actually provide a bridge that you know and they explain on their website how to go and get some of these places. But obviously that is the way that you get the Tor browser to work outside of places that are friendly to it. The other thing is, is you might wanna use this if you're like the only person using Tor around in your area. Because Tor works great at being anonymous when a lot of people are actually using it at the same time. So you might wanna tell your friends, your families, your colleagues, and then just anybody to, and have them use it because the more people use it and the more people use it in your region, the harder it is to figure out who you are, period. So contrary to normal behavior that you have on your normal browser, 
there's a lot of things you have to keep in mind. So no logging in, no personal information, don't change anything about the browser, don't maximize the screen or anything. And yes, no script can cripple websites. You can load it to access the website in its normal state. But generally speaking, if you're accessing a website that you've never been on before, leave no script alone and let it do its job. So I hope this helps you out. And I hope you heed a lot of the information from this and what you do with the Tor network, besides sorting, just don't do that because that's an asshole move to do. But everything else that you're going to do on it is none of my concern. Like this episode, like it, dislike it if you didn't, share it with those that you think can benefit from this, and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or topics, email me at askatqaweekly.com, go to my website, tqaweekly.com, for everything else. And if you want to make this show better, go to patreon.com slash tqaweekly and become a patron today. Patrons get these episodes 24 to 48 hours in advance of everyone else. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.